What's up everyone? I'm back after a long awaited break. Uh, I've been gone quite some time. Uh I took a new position somewhere else, uh career wise, so I've been kind of figuring that stuff out. Um coming up with ideas as to what I wanna put on my channel, because I just don't wanna put anything. Um useful stuff that I think people should know about or might help them. Um now, as you can see on the screen, I recently acquired a MSI X99 Godlike Gaming Keyboard. Uh, this is the carbon black model. There's another one that comes in red. Um, my prior uh, motherboard was a Fatality, a X99 uh, based ASRock, and it was very on and off. Some days it was great, some days it was bad, but I had more bad days with that board than good days. Prior to that, I had another ASRock motherboard. Um, and I've been buying ASRock for quite some time. They seem to be okay. I've never got one that was broken or had to RMA it or anything like that. But when it comes to overclocking, it just wasn't stable at all. Um, no matter how much voltage I pushed at it, no matter how much I messed with timings, every computer system is going to be different. You know, I understand that. It would, just didn't make any sense sometimes. Um, so I decided to go with MSI. I looked at the research, read some reviews. As of today, March 26, 2017, this motherboard in particular is $567 MSRP. Uh, I'm sure you can get it used on Craigslist or eBay or something like that. Um, I did get mine from a third party seller. I did not pay retail for it. So just be aware of that. Uh, some of the things I like about it is the build quality. It just seems very, very sturdy. Like you just run over the thing with a tank and it would still work. Uh, which I think is, you know, very, very nice. Uh, RGB this, RGB that. You guys know, you know, it's the year of RGB. Um, I think it's kind of cool because if you don't have any lights and you just kind of want a, a nice little kind of aura going on in your case, it works out great. It has a few colors um, for you to work with and some basic features like breathing and flashing and wave and stuff like that. I haven't really dove that much into it, um, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So in this video, I want to go over just a quick brief way. Say you go by this motherboard and you're like, you know what? I just want to overclock it out the box. I run an Intel 5820K unlocked, uh, obviously. And I try to get the most out of my my system, you know, same as if you got a car and you wanted to stretch the gas as long as you could. It's almost the same concept. You want to get the most bang for your buck, more or less. Um, on any given day on one of my screens, I'll have something like this. So that's what I'm staring at on any given day you know one of my screens I'm very big on stats and system health and seeing where stuff is at um i got a ton of crap open so pay no attention to the cpu usage um but you know we got cpu z real temp uh my system is water cold and you'll notice out the box i didn't do anything i just connected the motherboard moved all, all my parts over and right away it just yanked it up to 3.9 i believe the 5820k is 3.2 or 3.4 stock uh, and then i think it might boost like 3.6 if i'm not mistaken now it just bumped it up to 3.9 current voltage you're looking at what is it a 1.152 volts so what i'm gonna do here is go ahead and up it uh, to 4.4 so the first thing you're going to want to do is before you even try to overclock it um, disclaimer if you break your stuff i'm not responsible um, but if you're here you probably have some knowledge of how stuff works now their bios menu is extremely like you could just be in there for hours and you would still wouldn't know what half the stuff does or you'd still have to learn about it each manufacturing motherboard is different uh this is the first time ever ever that i've used 
software to overclock and it's worked seamlessly. We're talking me playing Battlefield 1, Overwatch, The Division, pretty much every flagship title at 4K, overclocked, three screens. Like, I, I run my systems to the max. Usually I have 100 plus tabs open in browsers. Um, so it's a little extreme, I know. Um, so if you'll see here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bump the voltage up to a little past 3.5. I run it at one, uh, excuse me, I run it at uh, 1.3524 volts, right? Now, for me, that works. For you, it might be a little bit different depending on your RAM, how many hard drives you got connected, how many video cards you got connected, you know, how good is your power supply. A lot of these things came into factor, but for me, 1.3524 seems to work right now uh going back a bit before you do that if you go to this oc genie uh this will probably be off once you click it it'll say okay you got to reboot you reboot and then you should be able to pretty much make any changes immediately now when i go to cpu if i go to show all i'm going to apply it to all my cores right we show all and I see that now I just got a yank the ratio up to 44 now I'm gonna hit apply now when I hit apply you're gonna see me jump from a 3.9 up here upper left right you're gonna see the voltage obviously this should already be up and it is it's at 1.351 volts and now when I hit apply second sometimes takes a while there's a bit of a delay if it does get stuck sometimes I notice it does get stuck um yeah see there we go then just knock it down one and knock it back up and then hit apply again and then it should work but we can see I'm at 4399.9 now, another thing you're going to want to do is go back here. You're going to want to go to manual. Um, I like to do that so I can keep my fans up, put them all on high and stuff. So I know that everything's cool. A lot of people these days seem to uh, not be very fond of fan noise and the, you know want to keep it quiet. Some people are all about keeping stuff all quiet. I don't really care because to be completely honest, I have music like blasting half the time so I don't hear anything so that doesn't bother me um so here we're at 4.399 within a matter of a few seconds now we'll go back now you'll see at idle granted I am uh using xsplit right now which does use some cpu uh and I'm roughly around 50s 60s 70s I will also mention it's quite uh, humid and hot up here today, so take that also to account. Um, but if you have decent cooling in your environment, like AC and all that, um, I'm in the Midwest, so it's still kind of chilly here. But once I get to AC, it should really be an issue. Then you can see, you know, these are my temps. Now, running this and then playing, say, something like Battlefield 1, usually it stays under 70 which for me i'm i'm okay with now i did try lowering it i think yesterday i was at like 1.32 and it crashed so i'm pretty confident that at 1.3524 it's okay um and from that uh i guess i shouldn't really have to mess with it that much now i haven't tried going beyond 4.4 i believe i could probably hit maybe 4.5 or 4.6 if i yank it up maybe if i go 1.4 volts i could probably do that uh but this is just a quick way less than you know five minutes you want to get it done you want to get your quick overclock at be stable you should be good to go i'll list all my system specs down in the description box so you can guys see what i run 
and all my gear and equipment and stuff but for me this has worked and i've run a test on ida64 and it's been stable so you know i can't really say any bad things about the board i've had it exactly one week and i'm already in love just the amount of stress i had from that old asrock board crashing all the time or me working in the middle of something and it crashes like i was just so over it like i'm so done i don't want to knock asrock because they're a good manufacturer like i said none of my boards were ever deal away and i'll tell you what if i ran my chip stock i would have never had an issue like, but that's not the point you know i paid a pretty premium price at the time three four hundred dollars for a motherboard and it was just never really stable um, it would randomly do like five restarts if you say shut down restart sometimes it would just reboot constantly some of the BIOS uh, patches that they put out were just complete crap that I had to downgrade to old versions. Um, so yeah, it was just a nightmare. This board on the other hand is really nice. Now you can go in here and configure your DRAM if you want. Uh, if you want to do something like a RAM disk, you know, that's pretty cool. You can do something like that. Uh, it does come with the newest version of USB. So I think uh, Type-C and then 3.1. So it has some of that stuff. It's about a year old, I want to say, give or take. I know there's some other big YouTubers that have done like full on, you know, reviews of the board, but this is just kind of, hey, I want to overclock it. I have this particular chip and I want to do this now. So this is what you're going to get. So that's it, guys. I hope I helped you out and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Oh,